Okay, okay. Oh, look at the chickies. There's Billy and there's Cuddles. They're just looking, scratching around, trying to find something tasty to eat. You may find over time that uh, this is actually not about farming and gardening. It's actually about cameras and the, the, the plants and the chickens and the little buggies and all of that. They're just my little actors because really, I just like making movies. And so, you see the little chickies there? It's legs, Billy, scratch, scratch, scratching away. And there's uh, Cuddles up top and then she's gone away. Now, what is their favorite thing to eat? I don't know, I'm just rapping. I'm just talking about chickens in life. Um, their favorite thing to eat is compost pile. And I will show you, you'll see that in a little bit. But I didn't know that about chickens when I um, we got them. So here's some of the greens that go for them. You can see here are some. Look at that. This is a little bit of mixture of grass and a couple types of clover seeds. Um, yeah, so I just try to keep those going. It's a lot easier to grow them at this time of year. In the summer, it is way too hot, um, especially if you're growing them in the tent. So you can see right there. It, they're, they're pretty sparse. Maybe I'm just not planting enough seeds in there because it's not as bushy as I think it could be. Oh, hello, right Legs. How are you doing? He's like, I think I might get some veggies today, so maybe I'll just come hang around him for some sweet, sweet clovers. Sweet, right, sweet There's greens. something I have been saving for these what clovers. Do you think? You think you might uh, want to relinquish some of those? Yeah, let's get a little bit of a drink of water. That's Cuddles and Billy's just drinking water. Mm. Hey, I want some water too, guys. Can you let me in over there? Uh, yeah, just let me in. There we go. Just let me in. Take a little sip for myself. Look, 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 look. Um, all right, ladies. You kind of convinced me. They've just been following me around. Every time I come out, so put out some greens that I've been growing. It's time to munch on down. You munch on that. So, that's another thing I feed these guys. These ladies. These hens. I feed them a lot of greens when I can grow them. Now, like I said, this time of year, as the fall is coming in our Pacific Northwest area, it's a lot easier to grow. Uh, grass. Um, the key, the trick, the um, tough part is just making sure that the animals at night, like the little raccoons and squirrels and rats, don't eat the seeds. <laughs> I feel like when clover seeds and grass seeds have sprouted and become kind of more plant-like, they just look like grass like anything else and it's more uh, innocuous and it doesn't, it does, they don't want to eat it as much but when you can still see a lot of seeds and things in there the the animals are attracted so you have to make sure that if you're growing it outdoors the top stage gonna get somewhere. more of this stuff this is my little shell to seeds. make life easier for myself three okay. types of uh, seeds in there a couple of things <clears throat> clover and then some rice and seeds. see my salt shaker put it into the salt though, shaker you have thing to refill it I just make sure you know you do the prep work other times and it makes life easy because we do not have any grass back there and it's just been a tough time trying to keep grass in the backyard so because if they don't if they don't get vegetation well though especially in the summertime it's the garden time now, the they'll just come I'm and try really, to eat really guilty the of garden is filling this up and then leaving they it out. They were going <laughs> over into the like neighbor's the yard day, a lot yeah. last year. We had so to plunge a lot of holes. And Billy was just, she's very crafty at getting so, over there. And so she just was kept going thing. over there. And we had to find a way to keep her on this side. Because I know they were just going for the grass and the, the bugs that are all in there. You see me shaking up a new latch. I'll probably check on that in a few days to see how that one is doing. I got in in the winter. I really should change the name of this uh, channel from the Urban Put a Gardener cover to over the it. Constant Gardener, aka so Chicken Constant Gardener. Because I'm, I'm I'm sick with it in the winter. I'm gonna show you too. You think I'm lying, but 
I'm gonna be out there. I mean, obviously in the winter, you know, if it gets below 40 degrees, you're gonna have to use that tent um, and to get it up to there. And not much is growing. But the good news about this part of the country is it doesn't get too cold to grow clovers that many days. Like you're gonna have some days that are gonna get pretty frosty, but no more than like and the days that are get really cold out here it's not always consecutive you might have a pocket of a couple days here and there that is really cold but for the most part as long as it's like around 40 degrees you can start growing some uh, some greens especially if you have a tent it's like kind of nice you know i feel like the 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 the, the vibe and zone is like 60 you know just warm 50 60 for grass too clover and grass you know and the good thing about it is well it doesn't do well in heat like they do in direct sunlight and hot hot days grass and and uh, clover seeds will fry but on on uh, fall days they can get pretty wet they can get pretty waterlogged which is a good thing especially if you're not good at gardening <laughs> you know you can just get a very muddy lump of um soil and just apply those seeds to it and it'll start growing you don't have to be a genius the only thing you have to be a genius at is covering the seeds so that the little ratties don't get to it i can't emphasize that enough we had so many living off this land that we had to take um, measures and luckily that has been severely reduced and so i am a happier human being overall um, but I think we went on an adventure to go find the crumble. <laughs> I was looking for the crumbles. I think here I am. I can I can see. There we go, ladies. The crumbles are here. I should have like cut that out. Really, I really should have cut that out. I'm sorry for it. Sometimes, but anyway. Um, so this is the this is the crumbles that I was talking about. I really don't look at the chickens in the back. They're just follow, They're literally just following me around because they think something great is gonna happen. But these crumbles don't really excite them that much. Like, if they if they were excited by the crumbles, they'd come over to the bucket. But you can see how they really actually just don't care, <laughs> and they're going back to the uh, um, they're going back to the trough to eat the vegetation. I mean, chickens are just like humans in that way. I'm starting to find they 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 you know the the food that we their staples that they get fed every day can get very boring to them. <laughs> And I think this crumble that I'm showing them, um, they just don't seem to care. They're not really responding to it. They're like, whatever. I know what that is. I know that I'm going to get plenty of it. I know that it's just sitting out there for us. Sometimes I watch rats eat it in front of my eyes, and I'm like, meh, because there's so much of it. Also, if you see some dusty dustiness coming off of that, that is actually because I mixed in diatomaceous earth into it. It's just a little... Uh, thing I spike the, all of their food that I feed them with personally so it's like a little dewormer like little bits of uh, crushed up crustaceans that uh, create shardy like glassy -ness for microscopic uh, organisms that might get into the you know worms if they get any worms in there so it's a dewormer um, so I'll, I'll, feed, I'll, I'll uh, dust their snacks with it dust pretty much anything that I mix up batches of food for I'll throw some of that in there they seem to be healthy you know they seem to be happy we've had them oh, goodness I have to ask my partner I'm not good at this maybe two oh well, definitely this is a we're coming on to the third winter this this winter coming up I will be their third winter we've had them and so wow rest in peace Val we're pushing on without you lost her to a coyote and uh, I can tell that story at another time, but ultimately, um, we're just happy that you all are healthy and finding your way in this world. And I wanted to thank all of you. Uh, I have two subscribers right now, um, which is very inspiring. If you enjoy watching these little videos of chickens and watching this camera channel that is actually hidden as a gardening channel then uh please like and support and i will keep making i mean i'm gonna keep making these videos either way whether you like or support them because i just feel compelled i love footage i love putting together the camera um 
and setting it up I just got this Canon M6 and I just rigged it up in such a way where I used to use a gimbal to uh, film the um, chickens but I felt that that was restrictive and I have a different setup now which has allowed me to get the footage that I like which is I would definitely feel comparable to the gimbal but it allows me a lot of more varieties in the way I can shoot because I love tripods goodness gracious do I ever love tripods it's off the point but it allows me it, it's not off the point because it allows me to get this footage that you're seeing and I feel like it looks rather lovely now legs we got some cool footage of her taking a dust bath see I'm missing it right now I feel like I'm missing it and if I kind of was just pan over to the left I would have been able to see her see look taking a little Ooh, dust bath right there her. that looks so cool I didn't want to get any closer and get her from another end because I didn't want to trip her out but I was like let's just lift it up and kind of look at her dusting herself it's pretty dry right now I can't wait till those rains come because those compost piles that I have they are just ready to cook I've I have layered them beautifully beautifully balanced are those compost piles but the only ingredient that they need is the rain so while we don't have rain we get nice dust baths now like I was saying earlier compost is their favorite thing this on a rainy day this little thing door that I open is just a world of worms and even on different times it can be different little buggies and crunchies that they find but my the staple that I vermi compost is uh, or like little earthworms the little wrigglers I have another video about my uh, wriggler farm and I can talk about that a little bit more and you know you definitely want to hear my boring tales of how I started my worm farm but it's kind of essential to gardening to have worms I personally feel because they break down material in such a lovely way and once you combine worms food and moisture they just gobble up anything now Val I actually did bury her with the worms and they they ate her they ate her whole well, I found her bones the bones got eaten by a wild animal but I did find her bones um, in the worm pile it was, it was crazy I just I literally buried her compost style and uh, took a bunch of worms and rest in peace Val the, it was a coyote these coyotes run through the neighborhoods I'm telling you they're just like a pack of dogs and they just go through the neighborhoods and you know you just have to be aware so we have to keep these chickens safe um, so hopefully I mean I think in the winter we're gonna need to refortify the cage a little bit because I think in the winter when there's less food they get a little bit more desperate anyway thank you for watching the video like and subscribe